Uh, let me ask you guys, mic on, is the, uh, is the sound okay in the picture and everything? I've got to check with you first because I don't know. <laughs> hey, where's, you're here, but you're not here. Can you hear me? Say something. Hello? Hello? Type something down there. Uh, okay. All right. Well, this, I'm holding this very gingerly because I got the, um, oh, there you are. Hi, Desmo. Hey, Forbin. Um, hi, Mark. <laughs> this is, it's still, still a little loose. Uh, but I was able to get it inside of the case, and I've got two cases that fits. The problem is, is that the the back is thick because of one thing, and that is, is that the winding stubs stick out, and so I can't. Um, the it, it the backs won't stay put. Okay, uh, but otherwise, you know, it's been great. Now. To take this out, let me tell you what happened. It wasn't wasn't uh, necessarily a good thing. Uh, let me get my case here. Whoops. Okay, this is. Uh, hang on a second. This is the case that it was in. All right, and um, usually when you have a watch uh, in a pocket watch. Okay, this is it's sort of like a double clamshell. Uh, this is the back, and those two are the winding holes that you need for it. And I've been thinking of somehow taking this off and putting it on my watch, but I wouldn't know how to hold it on there because they're both screw backs. I might think of something. Uh, but, you know, normally what you do is that you have your, your bezel and your other stuff here, and then you take the um, uh, screws out, the case screws out, and you just pull it out like this. Well, one of the guys uh, who has experience with this, he says, you know, he said, if there's no bezel around here, you can just drop it right out the front. And so I thought, well, that sounds like a good idea. So there was, there was one screw that they had that, to hold it on. But it wasn't a wasn't a typical case screw. It was a screw that worked like the kind of screws that you use on uh, dial feet. There are these sort of like the, the the top of them look like half screws, and then you turn them, and what they do is that they they lock on to the to the uh, dial feet. Well, what this one did, it locked onto the case, and so as soon as I turned it, that thing just dropped literally dropped right out the front of the watch because there was no bezel, hit the top of my workbench, bounced, hit the floor. <laughs> so it was, it's not in perfect shape, maybe. Fortunately, it bounded, it, it uh, landed uh, on hardwood floor after it hit the rug uh, with the um, dial side up. And so I picked it up and blew it off. Back to work. I, I tell you, the I wasn't expecting it to come. I just did a little turn, and that was all it took. And boom, out it dropped. So if you're if you're dealing at all with um, a vintage uh, pocket watches, uh, if there's a bezel around here, then you just pull it out, pull it out this way. If there's not, it's really easy. Unfortunately you put some kind of something to catch it and uh and that way you won't bang it up uh but anyway so now what i gotta do is that you know i got a porcelain dial let me see if i can hold it this way so i don't uh destroy it um and the it's it turned out to be super easy. The hard part 
is going to be getting the, the case to fit. It, it's in there pretty loosely right now. And um, I got it on this uh, this little uh, uh, case cushion. And what I'll do with it, I'm going to try it. I have another case that I put it in originally. And I'm going to try a number of different things. One, I'm going to try um, look into the possibility of drilling holes in a uh in a sapphire case if i can do that uh then what i can do is just sort of put it in the back and and wind it up and let her rip but you know having a you know it's turned out to be a really nice watch all i got to do is figure out how to keep it keep myself from breaking it again and uh and and doing some more work with it so anyway i was surprised that you know once it came out it was i have two different um uh, cases that fit in both of you know if you have a 6497 or 6498 you can drop it in one of those cases well, let's see who's here hi you see mark and thomas and forbin hi john and marita aaron kovac cool name um hey mark how you doing man uh okay max headroom huh <laughs> boy Okay, sound and video are terrible. Video is blurry and the sound is pretty. Oh, no, really? Ah, rats. Um, I wonder why it's going to fix something on that. This morning, everything worked perfectly. Let me take a look at this. Um, nah, that ought to be okay. Well, what can I say? Uh, sorry about that. Oh, hi, Steve. How you doing? Um, okay. There, uh, that's the one project. This time in, in my watch building efforts, I've run into two very different kinds of problems in terms of securing um, the, a working movement and dial to a case. The other one is my, this is part of the larger project that we've all been working on, is uh, using the ETA 2892. A, and what happened here, i got to be careful because I'll break this one too. Uh, what this one has is that the watch uh, case that it came with uh, has this big bezel. And what you do is that you put the dial over the bezel. And that's just fine, but it doesn't, <laughs> I'm not quite sure uh, about the way in which one goes about to secure it to the, to the dial, because I don't know if you can see it or not. Let me show you. See underneath it, it's, it's got this ring around it with these, I don't know, they, they look like, they're sort of like a almost springy-like looking uh, parts to it. So anyway. Um, so those are the things that uh, I've been I've been working on, and to me, I've been taking it very slowly. First of all, I'm not in any hurry to finish it, but even trying to do it carefully, I mess things up. And like that that dial, I, I had wound up the watch before I went to work on it, and and it was working perfectly, and now. I think it's, it's. I think it had a concussion, so it may be just a little brain damage. I'm not sure. It's still working pretty well, though. Uh, what happens, I think, is that the uh, the balance. There are different parts when when you stick it in there. Something is interfering with the balance, and when that happens, it stops. However, I found out that as soon as I just I just give a balance a little kick with the uh, with a um, and a little stick or something, and it goes back to work again. Hey, Megan, how you doing? Um, oh, really? Oh, good. I'll be darned. Megan, thank you. That's very interesting. Megan was talking about the uh, her dad used to take uh, and convert pocket watches. The thing I like about these old pocket watches uh, is that they have, and I think this one does too, that has a porcelain dial to it. And that's how come I didn't want to 
you know, they instead of trying to take the dial off and so forth, they just left it in place and took the whole movement. So unfortunately, when I dropped it, the whole everything went down with it. Hey, hey, Dominic. Um, Okay, Forbin, uh, you're in San Francisco, 10 degrees Celsius. Of course, they have nice weather. Hi, Maurizio. How you doing? Uh, Paul, how are you? Anyway, uh, uh, I, I, some, I, I mentioned this this morning. Uh, what I mentioned, it brought up some questions that I had about using uh, silicon hair springs. I don't have anything against silicon. I worked with silicon and computer for years and years and years. And the problem is, is, is that I sort of didn't take up Watts collection to work with silicon anything. Uh, first of all, you can't do a lot with it. Uh, the ones that they've been able to fabricate, I think, think are probably better in terms of keeping time than the traditional ones made out of you know more traditional non-ferrous metals but the thing of it is is that um you know you, you bake them up you know and you get this big sheet of uh of hair springs all of them perfect on this big silicon sheet in the same way that you get um Oh, circuit boards and a lot of other things that are made made out of silicon, stuff I used to work with all the time. So I don't have anything against it, and it's certainly more accurate, but of course you can say the same thing for quartz watches. But here's the most, the most interesting thing. Uh, Rolex, which has a two hair springs, one they use a lot, and that's the, um, uh, what, what's it called, the, panachrome panachromatic or something like that uh parachrome parachrome maybe that's what it's called now that's a nice one that's a combination of niobium and um zirconium uh, zirconium plus oxygen all right now if you look up what quartz is made of it's made up of two elements one is the is the most one of the most common things in the or in on earth and that's silicon and the other thing the other part is oxygen and so here and that's where uh silly um so it sounds funny like silly putty but it's called uh sila uh sila oxy siloxy i think something like that that they named it but it, so here you have two things is that on the one hand um you have the quartz that's made up of exactly the same thing that uh, the siloxy hairsprings are made of in Rolexes, namely silicon and oxygen. <laughs> and so, you know, they, they work really well. Uh, and I love them in my iPhone. And if I had a, a smartwatch, I'd like it in that too. I just don't like them in my in my, what I consider to be uh, real watches. So, but that's, you know, people were sending me these pictures of the periodic table of elements. I happen to know there's periodic tables of elements. In fact, I, I have an app of one. But anyway, so that that was that's also been occupying me, people going on and on about that. Hi, Clyde. How you doing, man? Uh, let's see. On key war wounds, uh, does... The winding shaft always protrude from the back. Do any protrude from the side? I would guess it would be obvious to attach a crown if the winding shaft protruded from the side. Yeah. Uh, all of the ones I know about are from the back. Let me see if I can show you this thing without breaking it again. Um, right now, let's see. Yeah, it's it's working now, but it's it's like it's it's on there. You can see it's not they're very stable. Okay. And to wind it, let me get it here. Take it out of the case. 
get out of here. It it really isn't too difficult because you have a, a winding. Let me see if you can see it this way. Um, it's yeah, you can see it uh, that that shaft that's used to wind it. I don't know what they call it, but it it works in the same way. Oh man, Let's see if I have something solid here that you can see it against. Let me see. Yeah, okay. Now see that thing that's sticking up out there. That's the winding shaft. Now there's another one that's the setting shaft. I think it's sort of that way you can see both of them. And and what you have to do is that you wind one up and set it. Uh, thing this thing doesn't take many winds. It had a it had a few, and then it was it was you know good to go. Um, but anyway, so this is what uh, what I found. You know this is. There, there's got to be, whoops, see, I almost broke something again. I'm good at that. This ring fell. I got to put it back in here. Um, the, the the whole point of this is, is really a, a couple things. One, it's a heck of a lot less expensive <laughs> than regular watches. There are so many different ones. And like I said, too, um, it seems like, I've always had great service. Uh, yeah, about a lot of vintage stuff. I I know that. Hi, Carl. How you doing? It's too cold to ski today. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Neferon. Just curious about how periodic table relevance used to reinforce a pro silicon argument. Oh, I know why, uh, Neferon, because it's uh, saying well. Uh, just like other metals, uh, <laughs> silicon's on the periodic table of elements. And, yes, 14 is atomic weight or something, I think. Anyway, hey, geezer. <laughs> uh, man, well, what's going on? Uh, but anyway, so those are the things I've been, I've been dealing with. And at the same time, um, trying to decide what, what what to do for my next watch or suddenly I find there are all these ones I want and I also find I've got some I've got a I've got a trade or sell really I, I decided that I don't know which which way to go on that it's a lot easier with a trade if you go with a dealer and a dealer says I'll give you three thousand bucks for that and if you did it on your own you could sell you know sell it for four or five so sort of thinking of that too <laughs> What? Hey, COVID. Hey, you're the COVID recovery. <laughs> uh, no, Clyde, not, not, in, not inside us. Uh, silicon has no place there. Silicone is a different story, though. Um, minus 30 degrees centigrade. Yeah, it's, it's here we've been about. Uh, about 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, let's see, uh, that would be about minus 20, uh, uh, no, about minus, that would be about minus 10 uh, below centigrade zero, but that's on Fahrenheit, so I'm not sure what it is. It's not like the state you have. Hey, Alex, how you doing? Computer position as a solace as mem. There you go. That's a good way to put it, Alex. Solus. Silicon is solace. <laughs> as mem parts. You know, I don't see the industry shining away from that. No, you're right. They don't. You know, that's it's another thing. I suppose, you know, some guy goes in, he wants to buy a watch. He says, I want a really good watch. And he's, and he's going to use it, you know, basically keeping time. <laughs> you know, he says, I want to wear it to work every day and I want to have it keep good time. And, I, you know, I don't care if you put a hamster on a running wheel to run the thing. I just want an accurate watch. And so you have that. And I, and I don't know what percent collectors make up the the kind of market. We make up some of it, but I'm not sure how much. So that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, <laughs> I might be getting the mother of antique watch hauls later tonight. Wish me luck. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. You know, let me ask something, Clyde. And this is not for me uh, alone. 
but for everybody, what is it that is, where do you find, you know, these guys, I, I think what the guys on um, uh, eBay and uh, Etsy do is that they find these halls like you talk about, they clean them up and, you know, they make a, make a good markup on them. Um, so, you know, uh, that, that is the kind of thing I think that's, um, uh, be interesting. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just, the reason I need a lot of them because I break a lot of them. So that's, that's my thing. Yeah. Good luck with that too. I, okay. Let's see what else is going on. It's been quite a while. Uh, yeah, Megan, I, I, I guess you get your, your dad's got, uh, he's been sick. I hope he's going to be okay. Uh, let's see. Vinny Jacutron. That was interesting. Got 25 days in skiing so far. <laughs> Carl, <laughs> I'm glad you, glad you have a fun skiing. <laughs> well, Thomas, you know, it's sort of a anything will work kind of statement you know maybe maybe you know they have a lot of uh, solar watches i i think seiko has some uh solar watches and you can keep your watch in the sunshine and it'll keep your um, it's got enough juice in it to keep a quartz movement going but that well, you know what about wind power <laughs> so have a little have a little sail or something that spins around in the wind uh, I could just put it here when I talk it, and wind it up and keep it going. Does JLC? JLC is owned by Richemont. No. Not Val Fleurier makes the hairsprings for them. I don't know who makes them. I do know that uh, the ones that I think are among the best are the ones by H. Moser. And, and they're made from uh, niobium and titanium. And according to uh, Edward uh, Malin, uh, they make up a huge part of the uh, H. Moser sales. So, you know, they're, they're very popular. Another company uh, is Atokalpa. And they're, they're, uh, they make hair springs that they sell to a lot of different companies. And, but they're part of the Sandoz uh Family Foundation that owns Parmigiani, Vacher, and so forth. Sort of a, it's a vertical organization. So the Vacher movements are made by uh, Alto Culpa and some other people uh, that I didn't expect. I uh, had uh, uh, hairsprings by uh, Alto Culpa too. Hey, Javier, what's up? As a pretentious uh, watchmaker, can you recommend any high-quality watch screwdrivers? Yeah. Um, boy, I wish I, I knew the names of them. Yeah, it, you, you want to get, uh, let's see. Let me see what. Um, Bergion. Bergion screwdrivers. The, all of the things that are made by them, I can't add dust. I keep this under a bell jar to keep the uh, keep them from doing. If you're gonna, you know, like as um, <laughs> correctly pointed out, as Javier said, I, I among the pretentious watchmakers doesn't mean you can't have really good tools. In fact, I can be more pretentious just showing off the tools, <laughs> say, look at these, these are the best tools. And so <laughs> that somehow associates any kind of skill that anyone who makes watches by, um, you know, putting together a, a movement and a, and a case. Oh, hey, Raj, what's up? Got a Seiko Solar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those things, those things work well. Okay, uh, getting a lot of watches out of crypto, it's a lot easier than constantly reshaping my uh, several crypto. Crypto, what is that, Clyde? I don't understand that. 
Uh, let's see. Waiting to pick up my new Moser. Oh, oh! I didn't know they had uh, Megan. I didn't know they had a Moser Streamliner in uh, funky, funky blue yet. Uh, I'm a big green fan. I, I like the uh, center, the Moser Streamliner center seconds in um, in the green, but that blue one would be nice too. Um, Oh man, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, Megan, uh, if you can, yeah, when you get it, there are a couple Facebook pages that you can show it off on, including the High Horology Lounge. Okay, over the watch. I want to make that clear. Okay, what is this? <laughs> All right, uh, I was talking about the Accutrons. Okay, on previous stream, I think I'm not actively seeking one. Thanks. I can't afford one at the moment. Okay, Thomas. Still meaning to send my watch collection photos. Desmo, do that, please. Um, Bergion Alternative is a German uh, Weiha. Okay, thank you. That's a that's good to know. Uh, let's see. Mark in Atmos. Probably not feeds because it uses bellows to power it. Oh really? That's interesting. Is that the one by Jaja Lacoutre? The uh, that that uses bellows. Best tools for watches. I am slowly building my collection. Dad has his watch workshop full of them. You got it made then. <coughs> How are we doing? Let's see. Boom. Okay. Uh, blue is a oh the chronograph. Holy smoke. Whew. <laughs> that is, uh, you're getting the uh, Streamliner chronograph. Yeah, that was, I thought maybe they came out with the other one in blue. Man, I tell you, that's that one with the um, Agonor uh, movement in it. That thing is a honey of a watch. Uh, Bergeon, probably the best. Yeah. I don't know. I, uh, because I'm not much of a chronograph fan, uh, I the only one. Well, I have a couple, but they're not. <laughs> I don't count them. What is a mono Raptor Pont, and the other one is a uh, uh, a Daniel Ross. So when it comes to chronograph, listen to someone like Clyde, not me. I because I, like I said, I don't care for them mainly because their uh, their dials and things cover up the the dial. But the one by H. Moser is brilliant, flat out brilliant. And if I ever wanted one, that would be the one. If I wanted a chronograph, that would be the one I'd have to have because it's such a such a brilliant. Uh, not only in the uh, the way the chronograph works, but in the way it in which it displays the time. Love that watch. Okay, let's see. That's right. That most real steam. Uh, punk kind of clock, very cool. Uh oh, frying pan look. Okay, hey guys, one last thing. I talked to my friend who has the. Uh, he bought all of these uh, <coughs> Fuzzy and chain movements. Okay, and uh, I got a column and find out about them in terms of you know getting them. Cause I I said, hey, could I buy one? He said, sure, but we didn't. He was traveling, and we were talking on the phone, and so I didn't get the price. Um, so what uh, what I found out, though, the, the Fousey and Chains he has are for clocks. Uh, but I still want a Fousey and Chain, and so I'll get a clock movement. And if anyone else wants one, let me know. Daniel Boone was a man. He was a big man. <laughs> Daniel Roth, Clyde. Okay, uh, let's see. Forbin. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that buddy time, you're right. Okay, guys, well, listen, uh, thank you all for coming. And I'm sorry if the uh, if there was a problem with the sound or the, or the video, but that happens sometimes. My bicycle has a Fousey and chain. All right. <laughs> Uh, that's that's as good as a hamster on a running wheel, I think. Take care. Be safe. <laughs>